At the recently held Google I.O., the company gave us a glimpse of the next version of Android, that is Android P. Now, there has been a developer preview available for Pixel devices, but a public beta has kind of rolled out recently. Now, without waiting any further, we did load up a Pixel 2 with the latest build of Android P. And here are some interesting features in the next version of Android. Now the first thing is UI changes. As you can see, the company has gone ahead and added a black status bar at the top, which is helpful because the next generation of phones which will have a notch, well, that will be effective in hiding the notch. Apart from that, when you swipe it all the way down, the quick toggles now have circular elements. Now there's also a new manage notifications tab right when you swipe all the way down from the notification bar, and that gives you access to complete notifications for all the apps on the device. Now one of the first things that we were surprised to see was gesture navigation on Android. Now we have kind of been used to the three button layout that's available on all Android smartphones. Now with this version of Android, Google has opted for gesture navigation. As you can see, you will have to move into the settings menu and enable it in the gestures tab. Now once enabled, it gets rid of the three notification buttons at the bottom. Instead, you get one floating dock which can be used for all three functions. Swipe up once and you will have the recent tab that is open. Apart from that, you can press it once to go back home or long press to summon the Google Assistant. The back button isn't present all the time, but whenever there's an option to go back from an app or there is a back action available, it pops up at the same place. Now, two of the other features that is based on AI and ML is adaptive brightness and adaptive battery. It uses AI to kind of figure out what level of brightness you would set in that particular condition and set it automatically. Now, adaptive battery is something new and what Google promises is that it will help improve the battery life on your Android smartphone. What that does is it kind of studies your behavior, how you use apps, how frequently you use it and what times do you use those apps. Based on that, it only allows the apps you use to run in the background and consume resources, thereby saving some battery life. App suggestions were a part of Android Oreo and it would recommend apps that you would use on the top of the app drawer. Well, with Android P, Google has gone a step ahead and now it recommends actions. So what an app action basically does is it will give you suggestions on an action in an app. So basically, instead of showing you the contact app, it will ask you or it will rather show you a contact list directly, which you can simply tap and place a call for that contact. Slices is another feature that Google has added with Android P. And what it does is it gives you tiny UI snippets. So in case you want to book an Uber, you will probably go to the app and click the location you want to go to. Now with slices, what it does is it gives you quick options. Now when you are searching for the Uber app, it will give you an option to probably take a cab home or to office or any other saved location. At the same time, it will give you the cost of the entire fare, the time it will take for your cab to arrive and the time it will take for you to reach the destination, thereby saving you a couple of taps. Right up till Android Oreo, we saw that the volume rockers always controlled the ringer volume. Well, that's about to change. In Android P, it is visible that the volume rockers primarily change the volume of the media. And at the same time, you have a tiny toggle which lets you change the ringer profile from loud to vibrate only and mute as well. Apart from that, if you quickly want to put the phone on vibrate mode, you can simply use the power and the volume up button to do that. Now, it's not a big secret that people are spending a lot of their time on mobile devices. And in order to help users reduce the time they spend with the smartphones, Google has added two new features to this. Now, the first one is called Shush, which is primarily a more advanced do not disturb mode. What it does is when you place the phone with the display down, it puts it in do not disturb, which does not let any calls come through, does not let the phone buzz for messages or anything for that matter. However, you can configure it in such a way that if you add a contact to your favorite and you receive a call, the call will ring. Also, in cases of emergencies, if you are getting a call more than once in the past 15 minutes, the phone will go ahead and ring. Now, wind down is a kind of a different feature that Google has added. What that does is it kind of helps you sleep a little earlier so that you're not engrossed looking at your smartphone at night. You need to set a time for going to bed. And what it does is at that time, the display starts switching to grayscale and that kind of motivates the user to put the phone down and go to sleep. Well, at the time of using the device with the beta version of Android P, Shush and Wind Down, both these features weren't 
available in this version and we are expecting it in the upcoming version soon. Two other features that were introduced with Android P was Android Dashboard and an App Timer. What Android Dashboard does is it gives you a visual representation of how you spend your time on the smartphone. It will give you a visual graph which will tell you the amount of time you spend on an app and the amount of notifications that you get on it. App Timer is something different. It helps you limit your usage of an app. So in case during office hours, if you want to use Facebook only for 20 minutes, you can set the timer up. And once the timer runs out, you won't be able to access the app and the icon turns gray. Now, both these features currently aren't there on this version. That is the developer preview 2 version of Android P and is expected before the official release. Now, talking about a few other nifty feature that's available on Android P. Well, that's an option to click screenshot a little easily. You no longer have to press the power and the volume button and wait for it to click a screenshot. Instead, you can long press the power button and use screenshot in the power menu to take a screenshot. Um, also, when it comes to display rotation, generally, if you have a display rotation off, auto rotate off, and when you switch the phone to landscape or change the orientation, well, you don't have an option but to pull the notification down and allow rotation. Well, with Android P, the phone does give you an option to change orientation quite easily. Wherein, when the phone detects the orientation change, it gives you a tiny button to help you change the orientation without the cumbersome steps. On the launcher, Google has also moved the Google search bar to the bottom, which kind of makes it easy to hit when using the phone in one hand. Smart text selection is something that was introduced in Android Oreo, and with Android P, it gets a little better. Now, earlier you only had smart text selection for Google's apps. Well, Google has now opened it for every other app that supports it. Android P is currently in the developer preview and will keep getting updates and features till the time of its release sometime in fall. So which is your favorite feature from Android P? Well, let us know in the comments below. And as always, for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.